today I want to speak with you about who are the three people that you really need to have on your side as advisors when you are starting a small business. Hi, my name is Steve Parr. I'm a business lawyer in Vancouver, Canada. The journey for most entrepreneurs is to first figure out, you know, what is going to have a product market fit and actually start to generate a little bit of revenue. Uh, obviously, that's the first and most essential step of starting any business is to, you know, produce something that is going to be profitable. Once you've crossed that threshold and you actually have a viable business, um, the th there are some really key advisors that you're going to want to start to build relationships with to discover who those people are and, and see how they can add value to your business. And you want to do that sooner rather than later so that you're not missing important things or missing opportunities or finding yourself in a situation where you really need great advice and you don't have that relationship built out because it can be challenging to find the right advisors. So. Obviously, this depends on what type of business you're in, but in general, the first the first um, advisor that you're going to bring on is a bookkeeper and uh, an accountant. So obviously, a bookkeeper is going to keep your financial house in, in good order. It's really important to find a, a really good one, somebody who's super organized, diligent, who knows their stuff, um, knows how to use QuickBooks or Zero or you know something something along those lines, and can, can really keep thing keep your house in good order because uh, without reliable financial statements, then you really just don't know where you're at. Um, and of course you have obligations with respect to tax deadlines and all of that that you need to, to stay on top of. So that's very important. And that's gonna lead you to finding a good accountant. Finding a good bookkeeper can be challenging. Finding a great accountant can be much more challenging because a bookkeeper's job is fairly straightforward. Um, and really you're just looking for somebody who's a really good communicator, responds quickly to emails, um, and, and you know, has some references. So an accountant is, is a more technical job. Um, and as you grow as a, as a business person, you're going to want to have an accountant who knows their stuff from a tax perspective as well. So they're, they're not just somebody who files your T2, who files your corporate tax return or, or files your uh, return as a sole proprietor. Uh, you want somebody who who knows how to structure your business um, as it grows and as it matures uh, so that you can take advantage of the most tax efficient structures that, that are available to you um, and start to think about all the, the different ways that uh, that you're going to be putting your putting your money to the best and highest possible use. So an accountant should be somebody who first and foremost you connect with, somebody that you feel like you can trust, feel that you that they have your back. Uh, and that they know their stuff, they're competent, and they are also responsive. Um, the number one complaint that I have heard from, from business people is, uh, and that I experienced myself, was working with accountants who didn't get back to me, who, uh, and when they did, they communicated in a language that made absolutely no sense. Uh, they, they were highly, either overly technical um, or they, they were overly technical and they just didn't communicate what it was that I needed to know in a, in a manner that made sense to me. Um, or you could tell that they just didn't know what they were talking about and so they were starting to slather on the lingo uh, in order to make a, you know, pretend, pretend at their competence. <laughs> As you can imagine, this was very, very frustrating and I went through four or five different accountants uh, in my first business when I started uh, a vacation rental management company before starting my practice as a business lawyer. Um, and, uh, you know, it was tuition. It was good. It was a good learning lesson, but it was very challenging and definitely created uh, a lot of headaches in, for myself and my business partner back then. So, uh, yeah, finding a great accountant is really, really important. You know, same criteria. You want to have good references for this person. Um, and you want to understand that you're a good fit, you know, because not every accountant is going to serve all types of different clients, you know, depending on their level of maturity and experience. Um, if you're brand new, then it may not be the right fit. They may not be able to accommodate you, um, but they may be able to refer you to somebody who can. So, uh, yeah, I mean, above all, everything it comes from the heart. And so if you're working with a bookkeeper and an accountant who have a good heart and, and really care about what they're doing and are not just in it for this, you know, to do transactional work and, and make a quick buck, um, that's gonna that's gonna help you and that's gonna be what you need to be around. So, 
so third person is a financial advisor. So a financial advisor is somebody that you need to have on board um, after your business grows to a certain level of maturity. You know, when you're first starting out, uh, unless you already have a lot of money to manage, then you don't really need a financial advisor. You know, you can use simple investment tools like Wealth Wealthsimple and other uh, robo advisors to to manage your your funds in a you know to manage your investments. Um, after the, it grows to a certain scale, of course, then you do want to engage professional assistants because they're they're going to be able to outperform. Uh, what management tools like Wealthsimple can provide. Um, and, and as well, like it's not just about managing your portfolio, it's about providing you again with tax advice, uh, with connections, with introducing you to the right people. Um, yeah, providing you with that advice. And they're gonna be able to speak to things like when is the best time to incorporate, uh, what kind of things, like should your holding companies, how should your holding companies be structured, um, the use of family trusts, all sorts of things like that in conjunction with your accountant and in conjunction with your lawyer. Your accountant, your lawyer, your financial advisor, they should all be speaking the same language. Um, another very important piece that financial advisors are gonna be speaking about is insurance. So life insurance, whether it's term life insurance or whole life insurance, um, these are products that are gonna be more and more important as you become more sophisticated and, and develop your business. Um, and eventually the, they're going to be essential things. So uh, particularly if you are in partnership with other people, then you're probably going to be putting together a shareholders agreement. And then the shareholders agreement will have a buy sell provision uh, where if one of the partners wants to leave or, or dies or any number of circumstances, then there are insurance policies in place uh, that will fund the, the buyout of that person's shares. So um, that is a very, very important thing to, to cover off. The business, you know, your your primary business is likely going to be the most significant asset in your life, and it, you know it's the one that's going to generate revenue year after year. Um, you know, so it's not your house that's your biggest asset. It's it's likely going to be your business. So, um, so yeah, similar to encountering a bookkeeper, you know, you want to look for somebody who just has very good personal qualities that you can relate to. You know, you should all you should never settle for somebody who just like you know, talks a, talks a big game, they should really understand their stuff, but you should be able to, to understand them and they should be responsive to your questions. Um, so those are the qualities that you wanna look for. Again, references are very important. And just, just make sure that your financial advisor uh, communicates well with your lawyer and your accountant because they're gonna be working as a team to support you throughout your journey. Uh, finally, of course, a lawyer, <laughs> good lawyer. Um, so you want to have a corporate lawyer generally is going to be the first person that's going to going to be assisting you in your business journey. So they're going to be looking at items like incorporation. They're also going to be drafting your shareholders agreement, um, and putting together any kind of, uh, contractual business agreements that you need to have. So such as like employment agreements, contractor agreements. Um, there are many different types of lawyers, of course, and they all have their own specialty. So as you become more sophisticated, then eventually you'll, you will need more, you'll, you'll need multiple lawyers. Um, you know, working with one one sole lawyer uh, is generally not going to work. So a good lawyer will know their specialty, and then they will also know the know excellent people who can fill in the gaps. You know, so um, you know, for example, I don't practice employment law, so uh, but I know very very good practitioners in that space. So if there's uh, or, or bankruptcy law, for example, that's not my area. So I can rope in other people who uh, can assist it if, with those kinds of issues. So um, that's something you need. The other, you know, same, same general principles apply, you know, heart connection, sense of like this person, you know, sees me, understands me and is, is in my corner for, this, for the business and is not simply looking at this as a, a, a transactional relationship, but, a, but rather a long-term relationship. So, um, so yeah, you wanna have a corporate lawyer who knows their stuff. Uh, who is responsive again, like, you know, I hear this again and again from clients talking about bad experiences that they've had with lawyers. It's generally about a lawyer who just doesn't respond to them, you know, who doesn't respond to them or gives them, you know, charges them for every six minutes of time uh, for small, very small questions. And, um, you know, lawyers, like every other profession, of course, have to protect their time and, you know, are, are paid by the hour. But, um, you know, more and more lawyers, myself included, are doing flat fee billing. So if you can find one that where you can understand what the pricing is going to be up front uh, and that they agree and honor the, the pricing that they quote, then 
you know, <laughs> it just makes a lot more sense and allows you to control costs, which uh, was, is, is extremely important um, at any stage in business, but, uh, but especially the start of, uh, of, of your venture. So anyways, I hope that helps. There's obviously a lot to discuss on this uh, subject, um, but we're already 10 minutes in, so I wanna keep this relatively short. So th again, those are the, the most important advisors that you need to have, bookkeeper, accountant, financial advisor, and a lawyer. And uh, if you have any other questions or, or comments, just please, uh, please drop below and feel free to subscribe. All right, have a great day, bye.